Hello everyone, after doing some digital stuff, art, I wanted to go back to traditional ones and I'm going to make something with just uh, this black marker and that will be my only art resource for or art medium for this artwork and we're going to make like something with perspective so it won't be a character and uh, there is this very interesting piece from i hope i pronounce his name correctly uh piranesi carceri or something like that uh, i think the piece is called uh, giovanni Bat battista piranesi or something like that i don't know and i if i if I read correctly, this is made with oil pen, oil painting, so hand drawn oil painting. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use just a marker, and I'm going to like zoom in on a, a, a particular spot of his artwork, and I'm going to make a drawing uh, from that. Uh, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's see yeah this sketchbook is almost full remember uh, the blood artworks <laughs> I had some nosebleeds so yeah let's see so uh, some studies of the human body like, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a recent piece so, no, 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 that's it. Yeah, watch the series. Uh, all right, let's let's use this. Yes, I think I'll use this. And you know, if anybody of you knows, this isn't regular paper. It's very thick, and it reminds me kind of a canvas for for paintings and. I do know that <clears throat> this particular sketch book is for all kind of mediums as you can see here so you can use pencil paint and all kind of paint I suppose um, <clears throat> so what what kind of paper is this it has this texture I don't know if you can see it uh, something like watercolor I don't know but it's thick and I think it will be good enough for <laughs> just this pencil, uh, this, just this uh, marker. So yeah, let's zoom in on this artwork of this artist, Carceri or something. Just to be uh, correctly, I'm going to find yeah. who made this um, let's see I think it's made um, by Giovanni Battista Piranesi yeah that's the artist and the artwork itself uh, he drew a carnicery or something just a second Yes, so um, it will be uh, some kind of uh, bridge and uh, Yeah, that's Ah, yes, yes, it's something from the Roman Empire, and I think the artist tried to show the strength of the Roman architecture or something like that with this artwork. Um, all right, so let's fly into this. Okay, so our first step is to take a particular spot from this artwork. Hmm. I don't know, it kind of helps if you use your hands like this, and then you can like 
make the borders of what you want to take. So let's see. An interesting spot. This looks interesting. Yes, yes. Maybe I'll go with that. But let's seek a little bit further. Mm, no, 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 no. That's not good. Hmm. Oh, this is also an interesting spot. It's like you can definitely see the bridge. I think I'll go with this one. See? It was a good idea to seek further. Go further. <laughs> Alright, I think I took my um, spot that I wanted to. And I maybe just go in with pencil for just some parts of it. Mm. Oh, I know. I know what I'm going to do. So we're going to save the image. Then we go to PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint, let's say. Uh, let's, uh, let's go with Word. New documents. And then we insert a picture or just copy paste it because I will take it sometime when I, if I'm going to seek the image in my documents all right, paste it, and then we use the crop. And yes, this will be an interesting spot. Or should we zoom in even more? Like this. I'm trying to find a good balance between contrasts, the blacks and the whites. Yes, I think this is a good, you have shadows here, you have a good balance between blacks and whites, so let's take that. And now we're going to make the image bigger. And this is very useful. All right, so we have this corner. Mm -hmm. Something like this. And then we have a corner like this. Mm -hmm. Then we have a corner like this. Mm -hmm. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Mm, yes, like this. And then we have a corner like this. That's for the shadow part. It's like this. We have our tree. All right, then we also have one, two, one, two, something, I suppose, here. And if this is the core, then this is almost the half of the image, like this. So guys, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting some parameters, if I pronounce it correctly. 
Uh, so some guidelines to be more <coughs> correct, so that I know precisely if if I'm doing the proportions of of it right. So and I'm using the 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 edges of my mm. paper as something to as a measurement. Let's say it like that. So yes. And yep. And then we have All right, so now that I basically know how it's going to look, I'm going to be a little bit more confident and uh, I won't use the pencil anymore and I go straight with this because I know that the proportions are kind of correct. So now I need to just enjoy what I'm doing and that squishy sound activated my birds they thought maybe it was a scream of their fellow parrots and now they're going to scream my head off of my body all right uh, and if you don't know where to start you already started when you made the sketch so just make that jump and go in there yeah. oh where well, again that squishy sound so yeah hmm. all right um let's fly in there so we have but still just because we made the sketch with the pencil it doesn't mean that we can just haha <laughs> we have the the pencil sketch let's let's be as reckless as possible no 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 we need to be careful and think a step ahead but don't let it prevent you from starting because the fear of making a mistake shouldn't stop you from making art because you will make mistakes even professional artists make mistakes that's just a thing that humans do make mistakes and if you want to become better you better learn from your mistakes yes
I often find that when I uh, am too afraid to make mistakes, that the art is also a little bit not as good as I wanted it to be. And that's no good. And I also find it uh, discovered that when I even not when I have that feeling like ah I'm just doing it for fun, it sometimes is even better than when I'm trying to make something super good with all of my power, like trying to make something decent. You know what I mean. So yes. Um, Also, there is this thing like uh, I hear that a lot of people, when they get a new sketchbook, they are afraid of that first page, like the beginning of the new sketchbook. <laughs> Very uh, intimidating, but I, I, I don't really understand why. Because a sketchbook is made to be messy. Like, yes, I saw some sketchbooks on YouTube, some amazing artworks that were there. I was like, wow, but doesn't it lose kind of the, the that thing of, of your sketchbook? Like I saw, well, for me, an ideal sketchbook, uh, not an ideal, but a good sketchbook is a good balance between uh, very neat art uh, and, and also between messiness. Because if it's all too too good, it's like a finished thing as where your sketchbook is like the beginning of a, a very great artwork. Like you make the sketch or multiple sketches, you choose the best one uh, from them and then you choose to make something with it. But uh, sometimes you can like the sketch directly and then you think like whoa i'm not going to make any sketches i'm just going to go with this design and you just go with it and that's good that's all right uh, and it can be very beautiful without all the messy things but i kind of also find the beauty in the sketches themselves uh, and even if they are messy, I kind of see the end product of the thing. And I think like, hmm, yes, this gives me a lot more information than a finished artwork. Why? Because if you're going to look at multiple sketches and you see multiple poses, multiple like color combinations, just quick color combinations, not too deep then that sometimes, not always, gives you more information than just one perfectly, perfectly made artwork. Uh, and can give you more inspiration, more information, and more uh, like kind of the feel of the sketchy and messy beauty of a sketchbook. Um, so, yes, uh, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I also try to make uh, my sketchbook as beautiful as possible and if something isn't uh, like I, I like uh, something not very good I, I'm going to erase it or kind of hide it by coloring it in and making something else like yes uh, you try to make it beautiful you try to make it as good as possible but let don't let that prevent you from using your imagination and using all uh, of your uh, like possibilities to make something. Don't limit yourself with, with the mindset of this has to be very good. So that's what I think. That's just my personal uh, view on sketchbooks. And I'm talking about sketchbooks because this one is almost finished and I'm, I also have some other uh, sketchbooks and they aren't finished so it's not like I'm going to start a new one but just wanted to talk about it and let you guys know what my view is on, on that. 
I saw some beautiful things on YouTube. Man, those are like sketchbooks that they could sell for a lot of money. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are ready to buy it. Also, did you guys hear of NFTs? Mm, I kind of a little bit uh, interested in it. Not like I'm going to do uh, go directly with NFTs or something like that, but it did catch my attention. Um, but it's also very difficult to understand. It's something not very. Uh, it's kind of no. It's. Uh, I keep asking people, do you know what NFT is? And uh, some of them say yes. Other people know about it. Some people don't know anything about it. And I don't know if you guys ever heard about it, but it's like they give uh, each artwork a code and it has some value because there is only one code and there is only one original or something like that i'm not sure i don't think i completely grasped the idea but you kind of can compare it if compare it with if you have the mona lisa there is also a lot of copies a lot of people drew it painted it there are a lot of pictures of it but there is only one original but then again a mona lisa is made like it's not digital it's it's a real painting. You can you can grab it. You know it's it has its own texture and all of those things. So it's not the same, if you ask me. Definitely not the same. You can copy pictures. You can paste them. And so what if there is a code? So you can still have the same thing. It ident. It it will be identical. We know that the Mona Lisa, it, it won't be, if you paint, uh, if you, you use the, even if you pick the, make a picture of it, you won't, will not have those, those, uh, that texture of, of the paint that's lying on the canvas. So, yes, you have the, the thing, but you kind of also don't have the complete thing, <laughs> if that make any sense. So, yes, uh, it's not really uh, something that I completely grasp, but... I do understand that you can use it as uh, a way to avoid banks uh, because if people buy your NFTs with a currency that isn't even accepted by banks, uh, if I'm correctly, it, it, it's the currency is Ethereum uh, and that's like kind of non-fungible tokens. No, NFTs are uh, non-fungible tokens and Ethereum is a currency that I use to buy an NFT. Yes, I think that's correct. Uh, please forgive me if I'm saying something that's very uh, wrong because I didn't really catch it completely, but it is something that should should be talked about. Is this a sh uh, like a scam or is this really something that people could use to make money? Um, like people are crazy <laughs> we all know that some people will buy anything <laughs> uh, but is it really worth it to pay real money or is it just like a very clever system to avoid banks or something like that uh, because i heard that why uh, some l l ugly paintings like literally a, a, a toddler could can draw them are sold for millions of dollars and i i heard that's like a way to avoid taxes or you you give something a large amount and you can say yeah i bought that painting or i sell that and uh, like uh and that, that's a very clever way to avoid uh questions like where did you get the money like yes uh you can say i i sell this picture for one million dollars and also for taxes or something like that um, so yes um, not too sure about how it works but maybe it's also something like that something to avoid taxes something to overthrow the system finding some loopholes or something like that I don't know 
uh, but to me personally it's very strange it's it's not something I even if I get that I uh, that example with the Mona Lisa then again the Mona Lisa is it's not the same thing as an NFT so it's not something I grasp completely um, yeah so guys what do you think about NFTs is it something that you would put your money in would you buy it would you risk and then again you don't have to risk a lot of money like buy something for a penny or something and maybe it will go and the uh, price I don't know I, I'm just saying it's maybe it's it's bullshit you know I'm not going to promote it or something because I I, I, I don't, don't know it myself I didn't buy or sell any NFTs I don't have the knowledge about it so I'm asking you guys what do you think about it uh, and is it worth even talking about it because some things are very strange if you know what i mean so yes um yeah also do you guys kind of also realize that by drawing art you also have that special feeling not only because it's relaxes you but also because it's like also very uh good for your for your uh, for your uh, health and for your uh, physical and psychical health because when you are drawing you kind of you, you you think about volumes and shapes and that's also a very interesting thing if you ask me um, Also, uh, kind of lately, something asked me, "What is it for you drawing? What, what what do you think about drawing? What does it mean for you to draw, making art? And what's why is it so important for you? Like, is it important for you? That's a very interesting question. Like, what is art for you? And you need to be honest about it. Like, 
is art something for you just as a hobby or a way to express your feelings or something like that i don't know so guys for me art is something uh, like relaxing it gives me some kind of feeling like like creating drawing that's that's something like for me it's relaxing a hobby let's say it like that and i think a lot of you also think about it as a hobby or am i wrong is it something else for you so feel free to let me know if you want to share, share it with me what is art for you a very interesting question and did your mindset about artists change because for me artists that's when i was little everyone said like yes you can't make any you can't do anything with being artist yet if you if you stop thinking about what others say and like go into it and even if you just make some research you can re literally see that a lot of artists are making some good money uh, if they are at least if they are uh, uh, artists uh, with interesting arts for people um, and then kind of when i saw that my uh like kind of um, perspective on artists change so the idea of you can't make any money with it felt away it just went away like it was like a wall that fell down for me because i thought why would you even if you are good at it even if you relax uh, even if you get relaxed at it, why would you do it what's what's your goal why do you draw like a lot of people just look at your art they say wow cool yes man amazing blah blah and that's all are you doing for that or doing are you doing it for attention or are you doing something for something else money so those are interesting questions that i didn't think about until a few years ago let's say three years ago maybe and there was also a period that i stopped drawing completely uh, because a personal reason um yeah i don't really want to talk about it but i start i stop it drawing completely and then i started with drawing again it was like ups and downs let's say it like that and uh, yeah <clears throat> If you want, you can share shop this artwork and maybe you can find the part that I'm drawing. It's a very uh, popular artwork and every can, everyone can find it. Um, yeah. Also, there is also this way of cross hatching. That's not like with lines, but like this. Maybe you know about it. Maybe you didn't. But yeah.
Also, hmm, I heard a lot about those art styles and stuff and this and that. Why? You don't need to have an art style. I just throw everything I want. <laughs> I don't really have an art style. Just throw what I want. I draw that I am in this art style that I want, let's say it like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Also guys, do you take uh, a break from drawing? Like, not for a long time from for like I did, but I mean like a break for um, like an hour or something and then start your drawing again or something like that. I don't know. Uh, for me, I don't often do it. I do it sometimes if it's a long piece, but not too much I don't I just want to finish it as soon as possible to go on to the next journey for me each drawing is like a level you don't need to be stuck on one level just go to the next one because if you're going to if you're going to sit and think about one artwork and st get stuck with it that's not good you shouldn't do that because if you want to learn and get better you should do a lot of drawings a lot of bad drawings you understand what i mean it doesn't have to be perfect just with your sketchbook make mistakes so that you learn from them and yes Also, there is this way of cross hatching with dots, very time consuming, mm, but also a very interesting way to fill a space to get it some tech, give it some texture.
it's very easy to make a mistake without checking and controlling your drawings sometimes you need to step one like take a step step back look what what you're doing so if you're not if you didn't notice i made a mistake and now i'm trying to recuperate because there was more some damage
Woohoo! This isn't as easy as I thought, and we already spent almost an hour on this. Maybe it would have helped if I knew exactly what I was rowing. Uh, yes. Let's use this, something a little thicker. Because with that tiny little thing, we aren't going anywhere. Uh, yes. I'll give it some texture. Maybe we can even take something else.
Hmm. I think it was a good decision to go with this. So we're almost at an hour. This is almost dead, it doesn't throw anymore. That is good for shading. No, this is better.
All right, that's it. Bye bye. Hope you liked it.